Hi, Jordan Williams here. I'd like to do a teaching video on what I believe has been one of the most important, if not the most important teaching and understanding I've received from Elohim or God. Um, and uh, it is on what I, what I believe being circumcised in your heart means. So, um, I would like to uh, take you to some Bible verses talking about this subject. Um, in the Torah, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, it says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love, will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. So, I believe here, right from the beginning in the Torah, it's saying we need to have circumcised hearts so that we may love Elohim, God, with all of our heart and with all of our soul and live. So I believe in order to start loving God and our fellow man, we need to be circumcised in our hearts. Psalm 119 verse 32 also uh, talks about uh, the English Standard Version. It says, I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. And when you take that back to the Greek or to the Hebrew, um, it says, At the course I will run your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. The word, the word for you shall enlarge in the Hebrew is Strong's 7337 three, seven, Rahab and the definition is to be or grow wide or large or large and uh, the translations uh, are to enlarge extend make room open wide uh, rejoice so when you go down to Brown driver Briggs definitions in the second definition, uh, it says, enlarge mouth, open it wide. So, what I believe opening wide your heart is actually, as it says here, enlarging your mouth or opening your mouth wide. Um, another uh, New Testament or Bidhat Shah verse um, just reiterating uh, the importance of having a circumcised heart is it says here no a person is a jew who is one inwardly and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit not by the written code such a person's praise not from other people but from elohim or god so you know it's saying you may be circumcised in the flesh but What's more important is circumcision of the heart by the spirit. And you know, if you think about it, when you circumcise in the flesh, you're cutting off the foreskin, and you know it, it's making it open. Um, and once it's open, it's it's always open. And I believe it's that's the same for circumcising your heart. Uh, you know, to uh, show verses. Uh, why the heart is linked with the mouth. Um, Luke 6, verse 45 says, The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So the heart and the mouth are linked. Um, Matthew 5, Matthew 15 verse 8 says sorry um but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart yeah but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this defiles a person so your mouth proceeds from you know, what your heart thinks so just to to show the connection between the two. 
2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. Um, we have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children, open wide your hearts also. And when we look at uh, that right here, chapter 6, verse 11, 2 Corinthians, it says, um, you know, has been opened. The mouth of us has been opened to you, Corinthians. The heart of us has been expanded. You know, the, the mouth and the heart. Um, when it says opened in the Greek, it's 455, uh, you know, to open. You know, to not be veiled over your your mouth to not be closed you know like to be closed minded or so um strong's exhaustive concordance to open to open up i believe it's very important uh to be doing this like i said in order to start to love second corinthians Chapter 3, verse 1 to 30, talks about Moses and how his face was veiled um, from verse 12. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away, but rather their minds were made dull. To this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed. Because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. Which I believe that veil is closing your, your mouth. You know, put, putting that veil over your heart. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord Hashem who is the Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen We now all having been unveiled in face and being unveiled is three four three in the Greek and uh, you know to unveil to uncover Strong's right here concordance from Anna in the sense of reversal and calupto to unveil open So over and over and over again, it's the Bible it's teaching. This is other verses as well. Um, you know, in Psalms, it says, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Uh, we need to be filled with his spirit continuously, with his word. So uh, I would just exhort, encourage those listening to this video to please consider to do this uh, that it's the starting point of our faith in my opinion and um, for myself I've you know I've been doing this for 18 years or so and I remember 18 years ago my mind, when, you know, once I practice this, uh, the thoughts, you know, it helps. It helps with my thoughts, and um, and it's just brought me closer. You know, I've, I've I've read his word over fifty times. It's given me the inspiration to to know him, to follow him, his ways, his Torah, Yeshua. 
who is the living Torah. And uh, thank you for listening. Shalom.